بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده Dear respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to another brand new episode of the program entitled Towards the Origin and to all those who will be watching through our YouTube channel, Facebook page and channel S uh, website that is live streaming One of the important bounties and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed upon mankind is the family he has created us in pair, male and female, so that we can find comfort and peace in one another. Therefore, family is the building society. It is the building society. Now, living in the West, living in the 21st century, what is the concept of marriage? What do we understand when we say, let's get settled down? or let's get married, do we actually understand in the true sense as Rasulullah has told us to understand? And why is it that unfortunately our marriages are falling apart? What is the reason or what could the reason be? And how can we make our marriages not only workable, but successful marriage that the future generation can learn from it? And it could also be a message towards the wider society that can be taken as an example. All of these and many more, inshallah, we'll be discussing in our today's topic title that is marriage an important stage and in, and to discuss this topic we have with us a very renowned scholar who is a graduate from al-azhar university egypt who is a respected imam and khatib of the london islamic and cultural center famously known as regent's park masjid sheikh qadi lutfa rahman assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh First of all, again, once again, thank you very much for being so late here in the studio and giving us your valuable time. Jazakumullah khair, it's my pleasure. Um, now, our today's topic title is marriage, an important stage. Now, living in the West, in the 21st century, what is the concept of, what do we understand when we say marriage is one of the fundamental aspect of Islam? Or how important it is, especially to Muslims, the concept of marriage. Jazakumullah khairan. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan ala ni'mati al-Islam. Fahadhi ni'matu al-azimah alati anqadhan Allahu biha min al-zhulumati ila al-nur. Wa manna alayna biha bi khayri khalqihi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. After praising Allah and sending salams and salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and I also testify that Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him is the final messenger and slave of Allah the Almighty. Now, marriage is a very, very important stage in a human life and especially in a Muslim's life. Uh, Allah the Almighty, he considered marriage to be one of his signs. We do not see Allah the Almighty, but we recognize and we acknowledge his existence through looking into his beautiful creation, through viewing his beautiful creation. And he said in Surah al rum in verse 21, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah the Almighty said in this uh, very beautiful verse that وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ And amongst my signs, and amongst my signs, I have created your spouses, your partners from yourselves. I have created your partners from yourselves. I.e. Eve was created from Adam, alayhi wa ala nabiyyina salam. Hawa was created from Adam, alayhi salatu wa salam. Now then Allah the Almighty, he gives the reason. So he says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that you may find peace and tranquility in one another. So that you may find repose in one another and you may find love and affection one in one another. As-sukoon wa tumaneena wa rahma wa mawadda. Litaskunu ilayha. And then he said, Waja'ala baynakum mawaddatan wa rahma. And he placed love and affection in between couples, in between 
man and women. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And then he says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And in it, there is a sign for the people who reflect upon the creation of Allah, the Almighty. So when we see <coughs> um, two different people come from two different backgrounds, two different families, sometimes two different ethnicities, and sometimes even you may find people are coming from two different faiths. So sometimes Muslims are, Muslim males are getting <coughs> married with the, uh, the, the females from the people of book, uh, Ahlul Kitab. So uh, two different people are coming from two different backgrounds and building a family and they become like one body. It's a very beautiful point that you have raised and I have to ask a question because this is one of the questions that we've on a daily day to day, and especially I'm pretty much sure that as an Imam you do face when the Ahl al-Kitab, the concept of marrying mm -hmm. the Ahl al-Kitab comes into mm -hmm. um, question. Now, the Ahl al-Kitab that we understand is or the correct understanding is those who do not associate partner with Allah subhanahu the wa ta'ala. Yes. Now, because in our, <clears throat> the recent age and time that we see the Ahl al-Kitab, we do see the, the Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, our prophet, Mm -hmm. in the other faith is considered to be God or a godly figure. Mm -hmm. Now, does that rule, I mean, does it satisfy the criteria of Ahl al-Kitab for a man to get married to someone from Ahl al-Kitab? Yes, um, at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa there were people from people of books and they used to have this belief in Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, but yet Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa considered as, as, uh, as people of books, Ahl al-Kitab. The Holy Quran was revealed actually after the concept of Trinity. Uh, after, after the concept, yeah. Yeah. okay. So Holy Quran gave a special name to the Jews and Christians uh, as, as the and people. And a special status yeah, as well. As a people of books. Mm. And uh, I understand there are scholars who differ with this opinion, but mm. I have seen uh, a big number of scholars, those who are even reliable, um, they, they're, they're still of the opinion that uh, a Muslim male can get married with a, with, with a female from the people of book as long as they believe in, 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 the, in the religions, Christianity or, or Judaism. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're talking about the signs of Allah. So marriage is a sign of Allah, the Almighty. You see two different people, they build one family and they become so close to one another that they become even more closer than, than their own family members, their own brothers and sisters perhaps. And there is a sign of Allah the Almighty in that love and affection for the people who reflect upon the creation of Allah. Now, uh, marriage is, uh, is something also, uh, it's not only the sunnah or the tradition of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Before we move on to that, yeah. uh, the next point, I just wanted to clarify something. You did mention about getting married to different ethnicity, different mm. tribes. Yeah. Now, one of the challenging aspects that our community faces, especially mm. our youngster, our youth, we do see that have a lot of reservation, a lot of um, sometimes um, some sort of grievances against their parents not agreeing to the fact that they're marrying someone outside the, the their tradition own, or mm. culture or outside their own ethnicity mm. or even sometimes just the neighboring countries. Yep. Now, what suggestion or what advice does Quran or you would give to those parents who stray, who has a very strong reservation about this particular or these sort of marriages? Um, we'll come to that point later on, but uh, just to quickly answer that question, we, um, Islam or the scholars of Islam, the fuqaha, the jurists, they do suggest um, the similarities in marriage uh, for the betterment and for the, mm -hmm. for the sake of mutual understandings, cultural similarities, uh, you know, similarities in many, many ways, language, food, and, and, and so words, on. In other words, it has to be compatible. Yes. So they, they have a concept called al-kafa'a, which is the similarities um, uh, that they, they say it is important. But... Uh, I will mention the hadith later on, okay. but the, the deen must be given the priority in okay. any circumstance, under any circumstance. If there's religion, the religion must be given the priorities over anything else, any other barriers. Jazakallah khair for that. Not now, problem. the concept of marriage, is it something new to Islam or is it just something that after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the final messenger, is, it, is this concept that has come after that or was it there since Adam alayhi salatu wa salam and all the other messengers and prophets that were sent? Um, not really. Um, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he encouraged 
highly the Muslims to get married. But we also find the early prophets, the Anbiya alayhim salatu uh, you know, before our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they also got married. Uh, there is a verse in the Holy Quran in Surah al rad in verse 38, Allah the Almighty said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولًا مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ وَجْعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً so Allah the Almighty says in Surah Ar-Rad that indeed we send messengers before you, O Muhammad, and made for them wives and offspring, <coughs> children. Indeed we have sent, O Prophet Muhammad, prophets and messengers before you and we made wives and offspring, or offspring or children for them. So that suggests, this ayah suggests that this was the practice of all the prophets or anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam. This also can be even more stronger, the, the evidence can be, uh, or the point can be even more stronger when we look at another hadith in Tirmidhi, uh, in, in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, uh, and the hadith is on the authority of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiyallahu anhu, qal, <coughs> قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أربع من سنن المرسلين. So Abu Ayyub al-Ansari رضي الله عنه أرضا. He says that there are four things which were the sunnah traditions of all the prophets and messengers. So he says أربع من سنن المرسلين. And then he says الحياة. الحياة is one of the sunnah of all the prophets. Modesty. حياة. Uh, uh, sharam. Uh, modesty is one of the sunnah of, uh, of all the prophets alayhim salatu wassalam so al-haya and then it says what ta'attur al-ta'attur is, is putting perfume or fragrance on uh, putting atar uh, on uh, fragrance uh, generally or musk uh, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to love and all the prophets used to love the fragrance so therefore he says what ta'attur um, the ta'attur was also one of the traditions or one of the sunnah of all the prophets alayhim salatu wassalam and then it was siwak using the siwak or we say normally miswak siwak or miswak using the miswak um, which is a branch of a specific tree in order to clean our teeth and make sure that we are uh, looking and smelling good uh, our, our, our mouth uh, is smelling good so as siwak was also uh, a sunnah of all the prophets alayhim salatu wassalam and then even prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said with regards to the siwak he said lawla an shaqqa ala ummati la amartuhum bi siwak inda kulli salah aw kama qala alayhi salatu wassalam the holy prophet muhammad peace and blessings be upon him said that if i didn't think that siwak would be difficult for my ummah then i would make it fard for them upon every salah obligatory obligatory upon every every salah and the last thing he said when nikah the nikah was also a tradition or the sunnah of all the prophets and messengers alayhim salatu was salam. We find another um, uh, hadith uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, حُبِّبَ إِلَيَّ مِن دُنْيَاكُمْ ثَلَاثِ He said, there are three things which are most beloved to me in this world. Three things that he loved the most in this world. Listen to this very carefully. Uh, and you can understand the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a very high uh, you know, uh, uh, taste he had a very high mizaj, our, our Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he said, <laughs> There are three things which are the most beloved to me in this world. Then he says, An nisa, my wives. So he used to love his wives the most. He said, An nisa, his wives. And then he says, What tib fragrance. Tib fragrance was one of the most, one of the three beloved things to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this world. And then he says, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةْ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ And the peace of my eyes was in prayers, in salah, in praying salah. So salah was a piece of the eyes, uh, a piece of his eyes, the eyes of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these are the three things the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved the most and one of them was his wives. So you can see that Islam takes marriage even more seriously. Even though it was the sunnah of all the prophets, but Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he takes it even further. And when he saw a group of shabab, a group of youth, he addressed them uh, a hadith. Yep. Be before I move on to the youth mm -hmm. concept, now mm -hmm. you did mention on, in the hadith, it clearly says that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to love his wives the most. Mm -hmm. Now then why is it that in today's day and age, there, we do find this, the, the lack of compassion 
yes. the lack of love in that relationship as if like someone leads instead of complimenting each other it looks like someone is a leader and the other person is a follower mm -hmm. why is the where did this concept I, I emerge think, from i think um the root of this problem it goes to the lack of uh ikhlas the sincerity and also there is lack of uh, uh desire for the pleasure of allah so <coughs> every marriage must be done to seek the pleasure of allah Allah Pak Rabbul Alamin Razamundir Janno, I'm the protector Bia Bia Shadihobe. For the to seek the pleasure of Allah the Almighty, um, intention plays a vital role, as mm -hmm. we always say. So when people get married, if they get married for Allah and to 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 please Allah the Almighty, then this marriage will have a lot of happiness, because most of these problems it, it lies under money, under worldly desires, under ego, and and so on and so forth. So if people have more sincerity and if they are in marriage life in order to please Allah the Almighty, then their marriage will be more successful. So, so that means, in other words, not only love and compassion, but also we should have the sense of responsibility within the marriage. Of course, yep. Okay, that's great. Um, now, moving on towards <laughs> our youth, one of the greatest challenges, even though we know well, there is a hadith that there is a strong encouragement for youth to get married. Now, the question of affordability comes into play. <laughs> now, what did Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say in terms of specifically to youth and in today's culture in today's day and age that we live in in terms of affordability? Now, uh, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, um, he he spoke to a group of youth and he <clears throat> laid some 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 uh, rules and regulations of marriage. So he said um, to to these group of youth, they're saying in a Muslim hadith on the authority of Abdullah. رضي الله عنه that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said يا معشر الشباب يا معشر الشباب من استطاع منكم الباءة فليتزوج he said oh youth if you can afford financially and if you are fit physically these are the two things so الباءة من استطاع منكم الباءة if you if you can afford financially the maintenance and if you are fit physically then فليتزوج then he should or you should get married as soon as you can. من استطاع منكم الباءة فليتزوج فإنه أغض للبصر and that is better for their chastity and well-being and their gaze وأحسن للفرج and also it is better for their their lower impulses. And then he says ومن لم يستطيع فعليه بالصوم فإنه له وجاء and then he said he's giving also solution to the people who cannot or cannot afford to get married. So he said, like, whoever cannot afford to get married, then they should fast, and that can be a solution to their problems of controlling the desires. Now, what is the what is the definition of man here in yeah. this hadith? Yes. That, because this changes from tribe to tribe, society yeah. to society, yeah. culture to culture, mm -hmm. and even from place to place. Now, how do we measure that? Because in today's age and time, mashallah, our youth are into mainstream jobs, they're professionals. Mm -hmm. so, does it really require for them to have that sort of huge no, bank balance to is, get married? <clears throat> the thing is, um, as long as someone can provide something to his partner, to his wife, and, and to his children, obviously later on, then, then he is ready. And, and a lot of time, it's a very good point that you've raised, a lot of time people have a lot of worry in our society. Mm. They have lots of anxiety. So no, not, not only anxiety, mm. if I put it this way, that there is a concept that we unfortunately see in today's world, whether it be Eastern or Western part of the world, wherever we live, is that finishing the education and then getting into the professional yep. career and That's then right. getting into the property ladder and then the concept or question of marriage then comes in yep. by that time you already someone might have already crossed 30. <clears throat> yep. so yep. how do we merge this how do we address this issue um, as long as a person every i, I believe uh, in this country almost mm -hmm. pretty much everyone can afford a marriage um, as opposed to um, like back home, uh, people may be like in dire difficulties, financial difficulties. But here, almost everybody can afford. And I think people have lots of worries. It is because, again, lack of trust in Allah the Almighty, the tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes people even go for an abortion, you see, like because they, they fear the, the sustenance, they fear that they may not be able to afford a, a second child or a third child. So people even decide to go for an abortion. But we need to understand and to realize, as 
our family grow, Allah the Almighty, He also increased the rizq. Because when He creates a human being, He also settles and He also Indeed. decides the rizq for that human being. So this is just an, just an uh, unwise and <clears throat> unworthy um, worry and, and anxiety. So it's just a misconcept <clears throat> that we have towards this sort of understanding. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, now, this marriage, the, the concept of marriage, now, is it, when I've already discussed it with you, when we, you have clarified about that, it's not only about compassion and love, it's also about the responsibility Absolutely itself. Right. Now, what is the commitment or what should be our social responsibility towards the marriage? So um, when we are talking about um, the responsibilities, um, Islam uh, acknowledge and recognize the fulfillment of human desires. Islam want us to um, fulfill our desires, but Islam want us to do it with some commitments, with some roles and responsibilities, with some contracts. And so therefore marriage uh, is, is, is very, very important in our religion. Why? So that we have that relationship uh, you know, uh, with, with the opposite, um, or opposite gender, but with some sense of responsibilities and commitments. And so we understand Islam is a very, very balanced religion. Um, because we have seen some of the religions used to even prohibit, even up until today, um, some of the monks do not get married. Yes. Um, we do receive sometimes people in our mosques and when they hear some visitors, non-Muslim visitors, and they say, are you imams? They say, yeah. And they say, are you allowed to get married? <laughs> so they they really get um, because the leaders of the other faith yeah, yes to do so they get follow. curious they you know when they hear that imams get married so yeah of course we do get married so um we can understand the balance of islam is is very very um high and and islam puts everything in context and in in perspective now there is a story and it's a very beautiful story uh, mentioned in um, in the book of Imam al Bukhari, Imam Muslim, so it's it's um, Raw Shaykhan and Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, that Jaa thalatha trahat ila buyuti azwaj al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The three men came to the house of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then they started to ask about the ibadah, the worship of Prophet Muhammad. Listen to this hadith. It's, it's a nice story. They started to ask about the worship of Prophet Muhammad from his wives, inquiring. So when they were informed about the worship of Prophet Muhammad as if they have felt it's less for them. So they said, look, Prophet he is a prophet, he's masoom, his sins are forgiven. So it's okay for him, but for us, we have to work harder. We have to commit ourselves more and devote ourselves more to worship Allah the Almighty. So one of them um, said, فَقَالَ أَحَدُهُمْ أَمَّا أَنَا فَإِنِّي أُصَلِّي اللَّيْلَ أَبَدًا So one of the men, he said, that as for me, I will sleep, uh, sorry, I will pray during the whole night and I will never sleep. I will never sleep. The second man said, وَأَنَا أَصُومُ وَلَا أُفْتِرُ The second man said, أَنَا أَصُومُ الدَّهْرْ وَلَا أُفْتِرُ mm -hmm. The second man said, I will fast the, the, the every day of, of the year and I will never break my fast. Mm -hmm. And the third man said, and as for me, I will never get married. Meaning, I will avoid and stay away from women. And, and I will never get married. So Prophet Sallallahu he heard the conversation, he came out and he asked, were you guys talking about this thing? They said, yep, we, we spoke about these things. So then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Amma wallahi inni la lillah wa atqaakum lahu. He said, as for me, listen to me, I'm the most God-fearing servant of Allah and I'm the most beloved servant to Allah and I, I, I fear Allah the most. Then he said, لَكِنِّي أَصُومُ وَأُفْتِرْ But I fast and I break my fast. Some days I fast and some days I break my fast. And then he said, وَأُصَلِّي وَأَرْقُدْ I, I, I pray and I sleep d during some portion of the night and some portion of the night I pray. And then he says, وَأَتَزَوَّجُ nisa And I get married. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي Then he says, النِّكَاحُ مِنْ سُنَّتِي فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي The marriage is from my tradition and who he doesn't follow my tradition, he is not one of me. My dear viewers, on that note, it's time for a short break. We have been discussing about marriage, an important stage, and we have found out in our discussion in the first segment how important it is from the concept of Islam that fulfillment, fulfillment of our roles and responsibility towards a marriage and what is the status of the spouses in the marriage. We'll continue our discussion, inshallah, after a short break. Do stay tuned with us. We'll be right back in a few moments. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.